the easiest thing in order of a game plan shift for Imavov would be don't fight Sean Strickland's fight. However, it is much easier said than done, especially when Sean Strickland, um, he, his style, man, very much he got that shell, right? Does a lot of leaning back, a lot of missing, chucking, and driving. And that's the thing about Imavov that the commentary team was saying the whole time, too. They're like, why is he headhunting? I'd like to see him attack the body more because fighting a guy like Strickland, who fights so tall, who does such a good job of rolling with punches and shelling up, it's hard to hit him in the head. But Imavov, I think, got lulled into what I had mentioned previously. He got lulled into the firefight. He got lulled into the brawl. And then he got basically outpointed by Sean Strickland for five rounds, more or less. I mean, did you see it any different? No, man, that's exactly it. I mean, even when Imavov started off round one, he was bouncy. He was lying on his toes. He was throwing kicks. He was looking good. Mm -hmm. And then about two and a half minutes in, you just see him start winging punches mm -hmm. left and right. And it, it makes a little sense when you've ever been in there standing there and you're trying to pick point, you're trying to be precise in your attack, and this dude just keeps throwing ones and twos down the pipe and there's nothing you can do about it. I mean, it makes a little sense why you're going to get frustrated, but it's up to Imovov to not get frustrated and fight your own fight. And we saw exactly what happens when you don't do that and you yeah. get, pick, uh, you get uh, picked apart and outpointed by Sean Strickland. It's a rough, rough start to your year for 2023. This is the biggest thing that concerned me is that obviously this fight got moved up to 205 pounds because it was short notice. Sean Strickland wasn't going to be able to make the 185 pound limit. So when they weighed in, Sean Strickland came in at 204, Imovov came in at 194. And I was like, okay, I like that you're staying light. You don't want to get too heavy, of course. But when it came down to some of their grappling exchanges, clinching situations, especially as the fight went longer and longer, I was like, that's 10 pounds, bro. That's got to be playing a factor right here because Imovov was, you could see him get clinched up against the cage and try to do whatever to squirm out and Strickland was just holding him like, nope, you're not going nowhere. If that were you, AJ, and I know we're not professional fighters, man, so this is literally armchair quarterbacking at its finest right here. Do you try to go heavier? Do you try to match the weight of Strickland? I mean, what would you do in a situation like that? Man, I think you go in as hydrated and as comfortable as possible. You don't want to be too heavy. You don't want to be waterlogged. You don't want to have this extra you know, weight that you're carrying around. But at the same point, we saw it in the fight, Derek. Uh, Sean Strickland would literally grab a Mavov and just walk him back. Literally just put him against a fence wherever he wanted, take whatever kind of control. And I think the weight right there did have a lot to play into that. So as a coach, as a as a fighter, as a, you know, somebody who's looking to do that, yeah, you want to be heavy because in the wrestling and in the, the grappling and in that, the weight really does matter. But if you're striking, then it doesn't. So which game plan do you want to face? Which, ta which uh, bear do you want to tackle first? And I mean, me personally, man, I think you stay lighter, you stay attacking, but then you got to stick with that game plan the entire time. Yeah, man, definitely a rough go for Imavov. It was a learning lesson. But then again, this was a massive step up in competition. You go from fighting Kelvin Gastelum to fighting Sean Strickland on short notice. It's a stylistic change up. Everything is pretty much different about that. So the biggest thing that I would say here is that for Nasruddin Imavov, there wasn't much to lose here. You were kind of supposed to lose. And I'm not saying that because, I mean, in terms of the odds makers, he was a betting favorite, a very slight betting favorite. But if you look at the grand scheme of things, Sean Strickland was just fighting the guy who's probably going to be getting another title shot here again uh, soon in Jared Cannonier. Some say robbery, some say apt decision. I don't know. The point is, man, Sean Strickland is a problem even on short notice. And I think this is where he got a little bit of his respect back. He showed what he can do over the course of five rounds on short notice. And I think he's still going to be a real player in that title conversation. So for let's talk about Taylor Bow tapes right here. For Nasruddin Imavov, I mean... Obviously, this dude's a killer. He's coming in. He's putting on for France and all of that good stuff. Slight setback. But this isn't anything that's going to really stall his career or anything, man. I think, if anything, this was probably some of the best experience he could have gained. What do you think? Oh, yeah. 100%, Derek. This jump up that Nasruddin Imavov had to face and with the pressure that Sean Strickland has and the five-round atmosphere, all the lights, all the cameras, everything like that, this is a big learning lesson for Imavov, especially because he didn't lose the fight in a drastic way. This is a close fight. This is a battle. Sure, Sean Strickland ran away with it. He ran away with the punches and, and he did win the fight pretty handedly. But you didn't get finished. You went we went five rounds with the dude who went five rounds with the champ, you know. So there's a lot of there's a lot of wiggle room and a lot of grace that Imavov can have from this loss. And it's such a big step up for Sean. But or, I mean for uh for Nasserdine. But on my my question to you, Derek, Sean Strickland, is is this such a big win or is this just another footnote that we're not going to remember and we're just going to be seeing, talking about Sean Strickland doing something else in a couple months and forget that he even fought Imavov? Did this fight actually matter? Do you think it made a big impact for the UFC brass or is it just another day, another dollar? 
Well, you'd hear Sean Strickland talk about it a lot. He said they paid me a lot of money to fight this guy on short notice. Um, coming off of two L's probably wasn't the best idea. But he said it was probably, I think it was Mick Maynard. Um, I think it was Mick that he was talking about. He was like, yeah. He told him, he's like, you know what, Sean? I like you. You're a company man. So, like, take the fight. We're going to pay you a lot of money. And even if you lose, it's not like it's the end of the world, right? So, I think he has a little bit of grace playing that Donald Cerrone role a little bit. Um, but I just, I don't think it was the smartest move to take the fight, but it's a Sean Strickland move and he capitalized and he got the job done, man. So it doesn't matter whether it was, you know, a high risk, low reward, whatever the case, he got the job done. And now you're not talking about, okay, now let me think about fighting like next fight, number 10, number 11, number 12. Now it's like, all right, I already fought the prospect. Let's get back in this title hunt. Big win by Sean Strickland. Can't say that enough, but I don't think that like in my personal rankings, there's not going to be an increase. You're going to kind of stay at your same spot right there. So big win, but uh, I think Nasruddin Imavov will definitely be back in, in, in hungry fashion, hungry form.